One weekend a year, nearly a thousand military veterans assemble in a camp in San Diego. What brings them is what they have in common. They're all homeless. The vets gather for something called Stand Down, started in 1988 by a soldier turned psychologist named John Natchison. Then it was an emergency response to homelessness among Vietnam vets. But all these years later, Natchison is welcoming the generation from Iraq and Afghanistan. As we first reported last October, Stand Down is a three-day campout that's part jobs fair, part health clinic, part sobriety meeting. The name is a military term for the time when a soldier can put down his weapon and stop fighting. The homeless go for a shot at redemption. We went to understand why so many people who've served their country find coming home so hard. The story will continue in a moment. Hey, good morning, you guys. How you guys doing? Gonna have a great stand down this year. It's a Friday morning in July. John Natchison is greeting his troops. Good to see you. Yeah. Hey. Homeless vets and their families who'd waited all night to get in. We are going to open the gates. Let's do it. All right. Fine. They were literally a battalion, 947 men, women, and children. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Stand Down. We'd like to give you a breakfast bag and something to drink. All right. When people come in, they're instantly transported back to the military, a time where they wore the uniform, where they were proud, where they were walking tall. You want them to remember a time in life when they were proud of themselves. I want to evoke that person in them. Natchison does that by putting them inside a military-style base on a San Diego high school athletic field, 30 tents erected by Marines from nearby Camp Pendleton. Here, there was hot chow, warm showers, clean clothes, and fresh hope. So who can you save? People can save themselves. I, I, I can't save anybody. You don't expect a miracle to happen when they come here for three days. Oh, I do. <laughs> you do? I do. You ready, sir? Yes. Have you step forward? The chance at that miracle came with over 3,000 volunteers who helped the vets check into VA benefits and look into jobs. How are you doing today, Mr. Lamont? Uh, there was medical care, dental care. Please remain seated and come to order. Court is in session. And even a court where they could clear tickets for loitering or sleeping on the street. The matters that are currently pending are dismissed with people's motion. Thank you. You're welcome. Why are these people on the street? It must be some gap that exists between military service and becoming a civilian. You're told what to wear, you know, you're given everything, and then suddenly you've lost your entire family, you've lost your, your identity. You think some people fall through that gap between military life and civilian life? And for some people, it's a chasm. All right, Mr. Worley. It was a chasm for Charles Worley, who served with the Marines in Iraq. He's still in the reserves, subject to being recalled. We mistook him for a volunteer, until we heard this. How long have you been homeless? Uh, a few months, about six. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Okay. Worley left the Marines in 2008 and joined the Great Recession. Okay, let's go. Like everyone at Stand Down, he had his service record verified by the VA. Then he was assigned to one of the tents that go by the names Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and so on. Delta Tent was Worley's first home in a long time. Where did you sleep the night before you came here? In uh, Old Town Park down in uh, San Diego. He hadn't imagined that leaving a war could be risky. I got used to the structure and was having a hard time adapting to civilian life because if you change commands or you move from job to job in the Marine Corps, they give you a checklist. When life get gets out, pretty simple. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's, you know, turn, they say turn right, you turn right as fast as you can without bumping the guy next to you. Uh, I didn't have a checklist when I got out. Without a checklist, Worley burned through the combat pay he'd saved before he looked for a job. Turns out, unemployment among these young returning veterans is double the national rate, about 20 percent. The VA tells us that already there are more than 9,000 Iraq and Afghanistan vets living on the street. Charles, what's it like out there living as a homeless man? As sad as it is to say, I've gotten good at being homeless. When you have two pairs of jeans, a pair of shorts, and three shirts, and you don't have any money to wash them, after a while, that you, you, you start to smell, and you know you smell, and so you try. I just try to try to avoid people. So you keep moving. Yes, sir. 
Clap. Hey, man, how's, how's it going? going? It's a familiar story for John Natchison, who, as a clinical psychologist, has been working with vets for almost 30 years. It's a new generation of homeless veterans. It is. This group is becoming homeless quicker than the Vietnam veteran. Vietnam vets came back. It took about eight to 10 years before we started really seeing them on the street homeless. This group is coming back and within a year, they're ending up on the street. And my best hunch is that for many of them, it's these redeployments again and again. Over the last 10 years, almost 900,000 troops have been redeployed, sent back to combat at least once. Getting redeployed two, three, four, even five times, why does that make a difference? When you go back and you are re-traumatized, it also brings up all the old stuff. Go back again and it layers over the top of that. And so now we're getting to the point where it's going to be difficult for the person to function. More than two million troops have already served in Iraq and Afghanistan. The VA believes that there could be thousands more homeless, in part because of the combat stress and brain injuries that roadside bombs inflict. Already, more than 300,000 have asked for mental health treatment. The troops that are going to come back from Afghanistan and from Iraq, is this country prepared for that? I don't think so. I mean, yeah. this stand down a lot. Oh, yeah. Saturday morning, we met Marguerite Summers and learned about something else that's new. There are more women among homeless vets because women now make up 14% of our forces. Summers is a former sailor who served until 1999, and she too had trouble making that transition from military to civilian life. Shortly after getting out of the Navy, she got divorced and began drinking. Now, homeless three months, she is desperate for help with her alcoholism and meth abuse. I have more potential than that, and I don't want to waste my life anymore. I'm tired of it, and this has given me new hope. You said that you'd lost everything and your family. Mm -hmm. I uh, lost my son a year ago uh, because of my abuse issues. Um, I owned a home. I lost that. I lost my family's support. I lost my job. Wound up with a bunch of legal issues. You know, I was facing prison time. Um, just nothing good came out of it. Addiction is a big reason some vets remain on the street for years. My name is Woody and I'm an alcoholic and a combat veteran. My name's Eddie. It's part of the deal at Stand Down that they come to the meetings that might be the first step to recovery. The best shot at rehab attracted Marguerite Summers to this tent. It was a chance to go to Veterans Village of San Diego, which sponsors Stand Down. Veterans Village is an $8 million a year program, much of it funded by the VA. It offers nearly a year of inpatient rehab, but it's overwhelmed. Funding is limited, and they were taking applications to choose only 68 patients out of the 947 at Stand Down. Do you want to get clean? Maybe it's man. You know? okay. They were looking for people who seem motivated. Summers wouldn't find out whether she made the cut until the next day, Sunday. As we walked around the camp, we found some of the reasons that homelessness among vets is a chronic problem, with a quarter of a million on the streets last year. A lot of it is addiction and debilitating illness. Bill Yarling was more typical of those at Stand Down. Older, an army medic in the 1980s, he'd been disabled by years of epileptic seizures. Here, Yarling knew what no one else could see, that the soldier inside hadn't surrendered. He washed off a year of homelessness and, if nothing else, enjoyed a ceasefire from the struggle on the street. It's hard to explain, it really is, but it just makes you feel better about yourself. You get back in touch you get with back the in touch with person reality. you were. Yeah before you were Exactly, homeless. and as you can tell, I did, you know. Um, but, uh, it's not easy living on the streets, okay. Yarling came looking for housing, but he found what Charles Worley discovered. Sometimes the programs don't match the need. No, no, I have a bed problem. I need somewhere to sleep. And if I, telling them I have an alcohol problem gets me a place to sleep, I'll sit through. I'll sit through the AA meetings and the classes so I can go to sleep at night and not have to worry about anything. 
Worley and Yarling couldn't get into available housing because they don't need rehab. There are other programs that provide housing for thousands of vets, but they cover about 20% of the homeless. So we just wasted our time, didn't we? Every day, you know. Stand Down can't track a thousand homeless vets, so there's really no way to know how many might have picked up a lead on a job or a home, or how many decided finally to stick to their recovery meetings. What we could count were those chosen to go into that Veterans Village inpatient rehab program. Sunday morning, the vets came in one at a time, and most heard there was no room for them. Ouch. Marguerite. Marguerite Summers, who had no place to go, came in next. You followed through this weekend, um, and we think you'd be a great candidate. Okay. Congrats. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. I made it. <laughs> Why do you think you can do it now? I know I have that hope restored in me, and I, I have the resources, and I just know that's what I need to do now, and I, I want it for myself. You know, I, I'm done living like this. All right, we need everybody in this picture. Come on now, everybody in this picture. Sunday afternoon. Are you ready? Yeehaw! Stand down Yee! ended with what they call graduation. Come on down. Left, right, hero! They marched with military pride for one last shot of self-esteem. <laughs> Bill Yarling raised the flag for Bravo Tent. Charles Worley for Delta. So let's have everybody in the circle now. They joined hands in a closing prayer. <laughs> then it was time to leave. And when you see them leave, you think what? It's hard. It's like, you know, Godspeed, you know? And there's so much that people need to do to be able to, to reach that escape velocity from, from, from being homeless. I hope that they get it. I hope that they have it. Recently, the VA set a goal of ending homelessness among vets in five years, and the government will spend a billion dollars this year on housing and rehab. But the 23rd annual stand down turned out to be the largest ever. This is just great. <laughs> Marguerite Summers was among 68 who drove to rehab, while 879 others, including Bill Yarling and Charles Worley, picked up their burdens to rejoin their battles. Fresh troops fell in with a column that spans generations. Next weekend, Veterans Village of San Diego will hold its 24th stand down. Charles Worley plans to be there, this time as a volunteer. He's gotten back on his feet and is now in college. Bill Yarling will also be there, but again as a participant. He still hasn't found permanent housing. Marguerite Summers spent more than eight months in rehab and left clean and sober.